to Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today, Around Kansas takes a look at historian Paul Andrew Hutton and his new book about the Apache Wars. Next, we learn about the life of Arthur Capper, one of the nation's leading publishers, who served two terms as the 20th governor of Kansas and five terms as a U.S. senator, among many other achievements. Then enjoy a poem from Ron Wilson, and we'll end with a story about owls. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Well, it's early Wednesday morning. I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And this is Around Kansas. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Welcome <laughs> and happy anniversary, Frank. Oh, yeah. This, this is August 3rd, isn't it? Yes, it is. We should give your wife a medal. <laughs> you know, everybody out there that thinks that Frank's wife deserves a medal, just send, send your contributions in today and we'll get her a plaque for, yeah. do we even want to say how many years? 54 years. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Seriously, <laughs> congratulations. Thank That's you. awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Well, as I said earlier, yeah, we got the whole weekend off for the holiday, for a honeymoon. The whole weekend. <laughs> yeah, the whole weekend. Yeah. So we went to Kansas City, but we did see the uh, how the West was won because you know back there in the ancient ages of 54 <laughs> years ago, there's a thing called Cinerama. It was three big screens and you know, ugh. and how the West was won was one of the big movies they made in that. So I mean, if a train crashed, it was clear across this whole wow. screen in front of you. So anyway. I have to say, I think seeing how the West was won and sent around would be a wonderful way to spend a honeymoon. It was fun. Yes, it was. And then, <laughs> no, I won't even say that. <laughs> but I didn't know Kansas City that well. And we went south. And I think we ended up in Ottawa before we figured out we need to go that way home. <laughs> So what are you going to do for your anniversary to celebrate? Oh, probably nothing. Maybe go to Kansas City for the weekend. <laughs> so. Well, fortunately, there's a lot to do in Kansas City, yes, so, so that would be a great way to spend it. So uh, when you were married 54 years ago, was it this hot, Frank? Uh, it was hot, yeah, it was. Yeah. So you couldn't wait till wintertime or something to oh, no, have like, an anniversary? I like summertime. Summertime is... It's fine with me, so. I tell you, people, um, I, I can't wait for fall. I really can't. <laughs> and you know, fair season is going on. When did the fairs switch to the summertime from the fall? Well. When did that happen? Because when I was a kid, I, again, and you know, back when dinosaurs <laughs> walked the earth, fairs were held in the fall. You had pumpkins and chilly weather, and you wore sweaters to the fair for Pete's sake. <laughs> well, maybe it's because now, Planting is done at a different time, so you get the uh, you get the summer harvest in, and you celebrate that, and then you're off planting. Well, corn. actually, it's between wheat and corn harvest, yeah. and I'm like, so you can't wait till the corn's in too. I don't know, but I'm like, <laughs> gosh, I. In fact, it um, state fair is still in the fall, so like if you've got a little pig for the fair competition, you got to have two little pigs because. Like they found out when they were making the movie, Babe, little pigs don't stay little forever. So <laughs> how many pigs did they go through when they were making Babe? Like 30-some pigs or really? something? Yeah, because, I've never heard that. Yeah, because they, well, they grew, you know. <laughs> little, little pigs are the cutest animals on the earth, and then they turn into hogs. It's horrible. It's, and then they turn into ham and bacon. And then they turn into bacon, which yeah. is good. So, yeah, the, Sorry, the, circle, kids, <laughs> the circle of life, it's all good, yeah. <laughs> Apologize to the kids, but... But that's reality. <laughs> yeah, like poor Babe when he finds out people eat pigs. <laughs> it was a sad day. It oh was my. A sad day. But we're going to have a great show. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamigo, it isn't. It's actually awesome. 
Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. LeCompton, the name was splashed across newspapers throughout America and Europe. It was debated in the halls of Congress. LeCompton interprets its unique territorial history with two museums and other sites. Events throughout the year celebrate history and community. Experience the life of the mountain man, American Indian, trappers and traders at the annual Bald Eagle Rendezvous, September 22nd, 23rd and 24th. Spend the day in historic LeCompton shopping, eating, savoring the rich history. Support Kansas agriculture education with an AgriTag. AgriTags are available anytime at your county treasurer. They look great on cars and trucks. For more information, go online to ksagclassroom.org. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Oh, we're back. I think we've straightened up now. Maybe. <laughs> okay, no more about pigs. All yeah. right. So okay. Nothing else about pigs. So. Except we did, we raised pigs. We had little pigs. They are the cutest little things you've ever seen. <laughs> All right. So, I, no, the, Frank and I have talked about a lot of the fun of this show is being able to share the accomplishments of your friends and relatives and people who pay you to share their news and all that good stuff. My good friend Paul Hutton, who is an amazing historian, and if you've ever watched the History Channel at all, you have seen Paul because he's on, I think, it's a law, everything they do, he has to have him in it. So Paul has a new book on the Apache Wars. It is incredible. I cannot tell you how good this book is. If you know nothing, it's a great book. If you know everything, it's a great book. It just illuminates this whole period of history and the personalities. And, of course, um, we did a segment when I was down in Las Cruces, New Mexico, um, last fall for the Order of the Indian Wars meeting down there. Paul was there, and we toured a lot of that country. And there's a lot of Kansas connections because, of course, the forts where a lot of this stuff was coming out of. You know, Leavenworth mm -hmm. is still, you know, rules the West. No matter what is happening in the West, there's some connection to Leavenworth at any point in time. So lots of, lots of connections there. And um, we're just going to take a closer look at, at Paul and this wonderful book and uh, a lot of the personalities and names that you've heard of. And it's, it's really cool. You didn't bring the book so I could hold it up. Sorry, Vanna. <sighs> They called him Mickey Free. His kidnapping started the longest war in American history, and both sides, the Apaches and the white invaders, blamed him for it, according to historian Paul Andrew Hutton in his latest work, The Apache Wars, The Hunt for Geronimo, The Apache Kid, and The Captive Boy Who Started the Longest War in American History. Mickey Free was a mixed-blood warrior who moved uneasily between the worlds of the Apaches and the American soldiers. He was never trusted by either, but desperately needed by both. He was the only man Geronimo ever feared. He played a pivotal role in this long war for the desert southwest from its beginning in 1861 until its end in 1890 with his pursuit of the renegade scout Apache Kid. In this sprawling, monumental work, Paul Hutton unfolds over two decades of the last war for the West through the eyes of the men and women who lived it. This is Mickey Free's story, but also the story of his contemporaries, the great Apache leaders, Mangus Coloradus, Cochise, and Victorio, the soldiers, Kit Carson, O.O. O. Howard, George Crook, and Nelson Miles, the scouts and frontiersmen, Al Sieber, Tom Horn, Tom Jeffords, and Texas John Slaughter, the great white mountain scout Alchise, and the Apache female warrior Lozen, the fierce Apache warrior Geronimo, and the Apache Kid. These lives shaped the violent history of the deserts and mountains of the southwestern borderlands, a bleak and unforgiving world where a people would make a final bloody stand against an American war machine bent on their destruction. Paul is an American cultural historian, author, documentary writer, and television personality. He is also a professor of history at the University of New Mexico, a former executive director of the Western History Association, and former president of the Western Writers of America. 
His research on Billy the Kid led to his consulting on the film Young Guns and landed his involvement in numerous TV productions. Paul is truly a bridge between the academics of Western history and the public audience hungry for those stories. This latest work on the Apache Wars and the personalities involved will open an entire world to those unfamiliar with the story and illuminate that world for those who are. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. When your living depends on agriculture, you can depend on KFRM 550 AM. If you're in the southwest three-fourths of Kansas or the northern half of Oklahoma, catch us at 550 AM on the radio dial. But if that isn't you, listen on your cell phone at TuneIn Radio or on your computer at KFRM.com. We promise to keep you informed, entertained, and company as you go through your day. KFRM 550 AM, the voice of the plains. We would like to join your management team. Buffalo Bill Cody earned his legendary title in Oakley. Bring the family and come celebrate Oakley's pioneering history and unique geography at two sites, the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center and the Fick Fossil Museum. Cody's statue marks his achievements and welcomes visitors to the Cultural Center. The Fick Fossil Museum houses world-class fossils and artifacts. You'll find Oakley at the hub of U.S. Highways 83 and 40 and I-70. Stop for the legend. Stay for the day. Discover Oakley. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. And we're back again. So, so Frank, you've got a great connection to Arthur Capper because you worked with... Um, well, with Alf Landon. Yeah. And they, of course, they were, they were very good friends. Right. And when I worked for Alf, uh, uh, he, he was at the radio station WREN. Uh, virtually every day mm -hmm. and he liked to chat with the people that were around there and uh, anyway at, at one time uh, the Republican Party in the state of Kansas pretty much ran the Republican Party nationally with Arthur Capper and the Stoffers and Alf Landon and do da do da and anyway yes they were they were very good friends and they conferred on a lot of issues so did you get to meet Capper? No, I did not. No, he was long gone before. He was, yeah. yeah. I knew that, so even as a child, did you get to see him when? No, I'm, how old are you? <laughs> hey, you just said you were married for 54 years. Oh, I know, you know? but Arthur Capper was, was uh, he, 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 he was deceased in uh, 1951, so. Well, you were around in 1951. Well, but I didn't live in Topeka in 1951, so I did not know him personally. I knew <laughs> who he was when I was what? six years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not even going to get into my age. But anyway, no. he was really quite uh, the publicist mm -hmm. and the statesman. Uh, he was one of the great ones. He was a remarkable man. So his new statue, of course, is on Kansas Avenue. And we are taking a look at all those folks who are being memorialized on Kansas Avenue. So here's Arthur Capper. Arthur Capper was proud of the fact that he was the first governor born in Kansas. Born in Garnett on the heels of the Civil War and just weeks after the Lincoln assassination. Capper was to find himself in the midst of history. According to the Kansas State Historical Society, at the age of 14, he became a printer's devil with the Garnett Journal. After graduation from high school, Capper went to work as a typesetter for the Topeka Daily Capital. Working his way up at the newspaper, he became an editor and served as correspondent for the state legislature and U.S. Congress. In 1892, Capper married Florence Crawford, daughter of Governor Samuel Crawford. The couple had no children. Capper left Kansas and took a position with the New York Tribune. He worked later as a congressional correspondent in Washington, D.C., before returning to his native state. Capper purchased two Topeka newspapers, the Mail and the Breeze. 
He later acquired controlling interest in the Daily Capital. By 1911, the Saturday Evening Post called Capper's Capital one of the best and brightest dailies in the West. Capper became the 20th governor of Kansas, serving two terms, followed by five terms as U.S. Senator, 1919 to 1949. In 1927, Capper purchased WIBW among the first radio stations in the state. An advocate of children's welfare, Capper established a number of events and programs to assist the state's youth. The Capper Birthday Party was a popular summer event from 1908 until 1951 when the flood forced its cancellation. He established agricultural clubs that loaned money to students so they could start modest businesses. These clubs eventually merged into the 4-H movement. To benefit children with disabilities, Capper formed a foundation in Topeka in 1920. He also organized the Goodfellows Club of Topeka. Capper became one of the nation's leading publishers of the decade and was featured on the cover of Time magazine. He served as the chair of the Senate's Agriculture and Forestry Committees during the 80th Congress and chose not to seek re-election in 1948. Arthur Capper died December 19, 1951 in Topeka. I was in an accident where I fell off a roof. I don't know why I started to research stem cells, but I did. And I visited with the doctors. They were excellent. I had my neck done, my shoulders done, section of my back, my hips, my sacrum, my sciatica, and my tailbone. Now I am having better range of motion in my arms and my neck and my back. It was a long road to get there, but I'm so glad that I found them. Fort Wallace stood on the frontier in the midst of the Plains Indians Wars on a major stage route and rail line. Beside the 1865 Stagecoach Station, a modern museum with thousands of artifacts tell that story, like the fossil of a 40-foot plesiosaur is suspended from the ceiling. Located on Highway 40, midway between Hayes and Colorado Springs, the Fort Wallace Museum is as welcome a sight today as the fort itself in the 1860s. Discover the fightingest fort in the West. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Cowboys like to eat, and we also complain about the food. In the days of the old cattle drives, of course, there were chuck wagons that went with the cattle herds, and the guy who was chosen as chuck wagon cook, sometimes his only qualification was that he was too stove up to drive cattle which didn't make for much of a culinary resume. This poem is entitled, This Grub is Out of This World. Now I hate to be someone to complain because people who gripe can be quite a pain, but us cowboys are really stuck on the hook because of our awful chuck wagon cook. On this trail drive, he's the only food that we've got, but his grub tastes like your belly will rot. Old Cookie makes coffee as bitter as tar. His beans have a flavor that seem quite bizarre, his beef is so tough you have to saw on it first, but it's Old Cookie's biscuits that are really the worst. Biting his biscuits will give you a shock. They land in your belly like they were a rock. Whatever his recipe, he ought to adjust, because they taste like a mix of gunpowder and sawdust. We'd give anything for a meal in town, because his biscuits are the toughest thing around. But instead of giving our stomachs abuse, I think I've come up with the perfect use. That feller Jules Verne wrote of going to Mars on some magic ship that could fly to the stars. A ship like that would have to be strong to make a journey so far and so long. So when they go to make that trip, they should use Cookie's biscuits to build the ship. Happy trails.
Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back, folks. Well, the other night we were walking, Dr. Jake and I went out walking because it had cooled down to, what, 80 degrees or something, you yeah. know, after the sun went down. And the breeze was really nice, and it was the night of the blue moon, you know, the second full moon of the month in July. It was just beautiful. It was like you've got the whole world to yourself, you know, the fields stretching out in every direction. And then this horrible screeching started. And he had pointed out a few days before that there were a couple of owls um, like out by the barnyard and he points those out and we're a little bit concerned about that because we got all these barn cats and we need all these barn cats because they keep away the rattlesnakes. <laughs> no joke. So we, you know, we got a new crop of kittens and everything. If you need a kitten, you can see it. And so we, you know, kind of noticed the owls. Frank, I felt like I was in the middle of a Harry Potter movie <laughs> with this screeching going on <laughs> all around us. Owls are fascinating, fascinating birds. They, they really are, are fascinating birds. They yeah. really are. And when they talk about their silent flight, that's absolutely true. Uh -huh. No sound at all when they're flying. And then you hear screams and you probably hear the blood curdling screams of what's being grabbed by the owls and everything. But man, they were everywhere. Hmm. They were just, they were on both sides of the, you know, the country road there. They were just all over the place. I have an idea. Do a story on owls. I just happen to have one right here. Barn owls are the most widely distributed of any of the owl species, as evidenced by the numerous screeches in the night and the poop in the sheds. Apparently, it lives everywhere but Antarctica. According to the Great Plains Nature Center in Wichita, one of the qualities that makes the barn owl such an efficient hunter is its hearing. Although the barn owl has excellent night vision, its ears may be even more important for catching food. Experiments have shown that prey can be located and captured by sound alone. What amazing creatures! Like many nocturnal animals, barn owls often live in the midst of people without their even knowing. They like to roost high and away in old buildings, sometimes choosing the proverbial hollow tree. Females usually lay at least four eggs, but might have as many as a dozen. Hatching is staggered, so that a nest might have young birds along with those still waiting to break through their eggs. This could help explain why this owl is so prolific. Seemingly every creature that roams the prairies at night feasts on field mice, kangaroo rats, and other rodents. The barn owl is no different. It occasionally varies its diet with insects, lizards, frogs, crayfish, and yes, even snakes. The other owls that live in Kansas are eastern screech owls, the short and long-eared owls, barred owls, burrowing owls, snowy owls, northern saw wet owls, and great horned owls. Take a walk at night and listen. Chances are there is an owl listening to you as well. 
Okay, we have to go again. I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And we'll see you somewhere around, around Kansas. Kansas. Kansas, gateway to us under the rainbow. This Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more and at agpromosource.com. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream. We're the best part.